Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. It's great to see uh, everyone here today as uh, we begin our worship this morning. Let us uh, stand together as we sing our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to invite any children that we have here this morning, come on forward. Children today, oh, we got one, all right, excellent, all right, well I have here today, what is this, you know what it is, it's a branch from a, from a, a bush, and you know, it, it, it looks green, right? 
What's the problem with it, though? It broke off. This branch is broke. So is this branch alive or is it dead? It looks alive. It's green, but it's actually dead. And the reason it's dead is because it broke off from the bush. Because the bush has its roots in the, the soil and the water and the nutrients and the minerals come up all through the the roots and the trunk, and then extends on to the branch. But because the branch is no longer connected to the bush, it's not getting any of those minerals, any of those nutrients, anything that it needs to live. And our gospel lesson today talks about how Jesus, he is the vine, and that we are the branches, and that we are to be connected to him, and it is that through being connected to him that we will bear much fruit. But what does that say if our, we are broken off from the vine, if we are not connected to the vine? Then it's, then we will not bear much fruit, because just like this branch is dead, we'll be dead as well. Not dead spirit, not dead physically, but dead spiritually. So it's important we stay connected to Jesus, and we stay connected to Jesus through prayer, through reading the scriptures, through coming to church, and through gathering together with brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray today. Uh, fold our hands, bow our heads, and you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us, for being our God, for being our vine. Help us to stay connected to you always, every day of our life. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for coming up, being brave, coming up by yourself today. And uh, head back to your seat. And we stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you were clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. For if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. And we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Be seated.
Our verse of the month, this is the last week of the month, and uh, one last time, recite this verse together with me. Hebrews 11, verse 1, let's read these words. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Well, today we're going to be talking about the fruitful life in your worship folder today. There is an outline where you can follow along with our message and also fill in the blanks. It has uh, some of our scripture verses that we'll be referencing as well included in there. So just encourage you to take that out, follow along, and take notes. So as we begin here this morning, God has created us As we've read the story, read the parable of Jesus, as Jesus talks about, I am the branch, I am the vine, and you are the branches, and we are to bear much fruit. He's called us to experience a fruitful life, a fruitful life, and just some verses uh, in in Scripture that support that. Going back to Genesis, Genesis uh, 9, verse 7, he says, be fruitful fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Then we have Matthew 25 where Jesus tells the parable of the talents where he gives one servant, he gives him ten talents. Another servant, he gives five talents. Uh, Another servant, he gives one talent. Each according to his ability and the expectation is that those servants are going to take those talents and that they are going to multiply those talents. And the first servant goes out and he he takes the five talents that he's been given and he makes five more talents. And when the master returns, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Then we have John 10, verse 10, where Jesus contrasts himself to the evil one, contrasts himself to Satan, the thief who comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. But he says, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it, what he says, that you may have it abundantly. And then there's Ephesians chapter 2. My my confirmation verse was Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for we are God's workmanship. You know, we are, well, it says, it, for by grace we have been saved through faith, and this is not of ourselves, not of works that not any of us can boast. And we usually focus in on Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, but there's this verse 10 uh, that comes after. It talks about God's grace that we receive through faith, not of our works. But he says here that we are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. To do good things upon this earth, to love our neighbor, to serve our neighbor. And then there is, of course, in our gospel reading today, Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch, you know, that does not bear fruit is pruned. But ultimately, you know, God does with the branch so that it may bear, not here it says not just fruit, but that it may bear more fruit. Uh, how does God call us to be fruitful? Well, there's, there's children, <laughs> He says, be fruitful and and multiply. So uh, we take pride in in our children. Uh, There's there's art, music, painting. Uh, There's each of us, you know, have the opportunity to learn crafts and skill. Maybe through our our occupation and and that which we do, we we produce to serve this world and to serve others. Uh, And then there's serving others through The work of the church, whether it's serving as an usher or as uh, part of the altar guild, uh, serving on on a a committee or some other way, uh, ministering Wednesday warriors, serving and ministering through the church. You know, God, you know, created us to be fruitful. And uh, certainly we enjoy leisure. And God gave us leisure to enjoy. I love to play golf. I love to to go uh, and sit on the, the, the beach But the thing is, no number of days sitting on the beach is ultimately going to bring you fulfillment. You're not necessarily going to take pride in in your leisure and find fulfillment in your leisure. It is in the work that God has given to you that you find uh, fulfillment. God created us to be fruitful. And so when we are fruitful, that is how... That is one of the ways in this world in which we find joy. It says here, uh, every branch that does not bear fruit. What does Scripture say? It says he takes away. 
Every fruit that does not bear fruit, he takes away. The branch is there to bear fruit. The grape vine is there to bear fruit. And if it does not produce, well, it is not serving the purpose for which it was planted. And if we are not producing fruit as God has called us to produce fruit, we are not serving the purpose for which God has created. And it says, you know, in the parable of the talents, to the one that was given one talent who did not produce fruit with that talent, who did not multiply that talent, God took it away from that one. And what did he do? He gave it to the one who made five more from the original five that he was given. Uh, So... In this parable, God the Father, he is what? He's the vine dresser. He is the gardener. He is the one who plants the vine. He is the creator of all things in this world, everything that we see. It says in Psalm 80, you brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out of the nations and you planted it. It points that God is the originator. He is the vine dresser. He is the gardener. It, God the Father, it all starts with him. And the original vine that he planted was his chosen people, uh, the nation Israel in the Old Testament. But it says here in verse 21 of Jeremiah chapter 2, I planted a choice vine. Holy of pure seed. But now then you have turned degenerate and become a wild vine. So the purpose for which God had planted that vine, it ultimately did not fulfill that purpose. And what does it say? If it doesn't fulfill its purpose, if it's not producing fruit, God takes it away and gives that purpose to another. And so we are introduced to Jesus. Jesus is the new vine. Jesus is what we would say here in the scriptures. In John 15, it says he is, he is the true vine. He's the true vine. Uh, Jesus would say to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. For even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The nation in the Old Testament, they simply did not produce the fruit that God desired for them to produce. So he introduces this new vine, and that is the true vine, Jesus Christ. And if Jesus is the true vine, then we are, we are the branches, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And as I shared with in the children's message, apart from him, if we're not connected to that vine, we can do nothing. So talking this morning about bearing fruit, there are different seasons for the branches and for the vine. Uh, The first season in life, and we're in these different seasons at different times in our life, there is a season of abiding. Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. Maybe you feel that you're experiencing scarcity in life. Maybe you're experiencing frustration in life. Maybe you're experiencing futility in life. Maybe you're feeling unfruitful in your life. And our our temptation is that when we're feeling unfulfilled, when we're feeling unfruitful, when we're feeling frustrated, is that we work harder and that we try harder and that we do more uh, i've made this I, I don't have much of a green thumb and uh i've i've killed probably more plants than i've grown and the temptation is when a, a plant is not doing well well what does it need more water more fertilizer more sun and a lot of times it just more and more and more and more, it ultimately kills the plant. Sometimes you need to just let it be. Here Jesus says, just abide, remain, rest. There's the third commandment, honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. But we work, we work, we work, and we keep working, we keep 
going, and we don't simply take that time to rest. And there's a sacrament. We come here, Jesus says, do this often in remembrance of me. It's interesting, Jesus speaks these words about abiding and remaining in him. You know where he's at? He's in the upper room together with his disciples on the night that he was betrayed when he instituted this meal. Uh, you think about abiding. Uh, one of the uh, times where we abide in life and we just simply be is when we're sharing a meal with family, when we're sharing a meal with friends. But in this age of, of fast food, we're always in a hurry. We're always rushing. And a lot of times we don't enjoy our meals because we've got so much that is going on. But sometimes Jesus says, abide. And this is what this meal is, that we come here that we savor his grace, his mercy, his love, his forgiveness. And then, of course, there is the word. To be in his word, to abide in his word weekly, daily, hour by hour. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're always reading the word, studying the word, but that we have the word here. This is why we're doing the verse of the month. That we have the word in our mind and in our heart and throughout the day that we would ponder that word, what God says and what God speaks. A second season of life is, is growing. So there's abiding and then there is growing. And what this talks about here is, is patience. A, a plant is grown not in a matter of days, but it is grown over the matter of seasons. The grapevine, it takes three years to produce the fruit. Three years to produce the fruit. But in our world of instant communication, we are looking for the quick fix. And if something doesn't work right away, well, then we quickly move on. But oftentimes... There's these seasons of growing where we're learning a new skill, where we're growing in experience, growing in discipline, and growing in patience. A third season is that of pruning. And this is probably the most difficult of them all. Not to say the other two are easy. It's difficult sometimes to abide. It, it's difficult to be patient and to wait for that growth. Uh, but the pruning can even be more difficult, and this is the cutting back. Jesus says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, what does he do? It says he prunes so that it may bear, that it may bear more fruit. Uh, in Matthew 3, verse 8, Jesus says, bear fruit in keeping with repentance you know the thing is we don't brag about the things that we prune we brag about the things that we produce but when it comes to producing the pruning comes before a lot of us were while we are the branch to bear grapes we're trying to produce bananas and strawberries and oranges, and apples. But God didn't call us to bear all of the different fruit. He called us to bear the fruit that he called us to produce. And that means sometimes cutting back. Not trying to be everything that we're trying to be or want to be, but being that which God made us to be. And then the fourth season... That is the season of fruitfulness. And this is where we get to enjoy and to reap the harvest from the seasons of abiding, the seasons of growing, and the seasons of pruning. And the evidence of all of that, the evidence of fruitfulness are this. Number one, a vibrant prayer life. A vibrant prayer life. Jesus says, abide in me and my words abide and my words abide in you. And you can ask whatever it is that you wish and it will be done for you because you've been abiding. You've been, you've been growing. You've, you've done the, the, the pruning and that you know what to ask 
that you ask in Jesus' name. And here it says, when you ask in Jesus' name, it will be done for you. Another part of the evidence of a uh, fruitful life is, is keeping of the commandments. Keeping of the commandments. Again, John 15, Jesus says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And keeping the commandments is not a matter of that we have to do this. It's not a matter, uh, a sense of, of obligation. But, you know, keeping the, the commandments is, is our joy. It is our, our privilege. It is our honor because of what Jesus has done for us, what Jesus has produced in us and through us, that it's not a got to, but it is a get to. The third thing, the Father is, the Father is glorified. By this it says... The Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Who is it about? Is it about me? Is it about you? No, ultimately it is about him. And we seek to bear, bear fruit, not for our benefit, but we bear the fruit that we are called to bear for the benefit of God's kingdom and for the benefit of others. This is about a heart of worship. This is about serving others. This is about living with compassion and being generous as well. And then the last one. Father's glorified and my joy is full. My joy is full. John 15 again. These things Jesus says, I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. There's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is an emotion that is based upon our circumstances. The thing is, I can be happy, and I can also be sad, and I can be sad and yet have joy. I can have struggles in, in, in my life and still be filled with joy because I know that God is at work and through my suffering, through my trials in life, that God will use that and that God will prosper that. And that will be for, not only for my benefit, but it will be for the benefit of others. You think about Jesus, who for the joy set before him, it says, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. Do you think the cross made Jesus happy? No. But it was in the cross that he found joy. Because he knew that he was giving his life for you and for me. That we would be joined together in his heavenly home. Share eternity together. It's about making a bigger heaven. And we are grateful that Jesus, he is our vine, that we are his branches, and that being connected to him in word and in sacrament and the fellowship of believers, that we might bear much fruit. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of that connection that we have, being connected to Jesus the vine. Thank you that you are our Father, that you are the vine dresser, Help us, Lord, to live lives uh, that are, first of all, connected to the, the vine, that abide in the vine, uh, that, that we are patient in, in, in allowing you to grow us in terms of who you've called us to be. Help us, Lord, to prune and to cut back that which is not necessary, that, Lord, we would experience the fruitful life in Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We continue our worship now as we bring our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord.
This morning in prayer as we come to our of uh, and supplications, we lift up, uh, pray for successful cancer treatment for Edith Bonner, Bronner and for Kel- Kelsey Hilscher. We also ask for successful surgery for Michael D. Paolo. Uh, and we also want to keep uh, in our prayers uh, also the family of uh, Nelson uh, Lutke as uh, he was laid to rest earlier this past. Lord God, your only Son came in the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. Protect us from all false teaching and the spirit of deceit, that we may always confess Christ to be our true God and remain faithful to him. Help help us to live lives that are honorable, noble, and true. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have grafted us into the vine of your Son. Prune us and cut cut off from us all sin and death may always draw life from your Son and produce fruits of faith and good works. Lord, in your mercy. Savior of all people, in the water of baptism, you welcome sinners into your kingdom and give them life. Grant that we would always honor and extol. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, give health and guidance to our president and all in authority that they may serve honorably and in accord with your good order. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you hear and answer your children in their hour of need. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would give your aid today to Edith, Kelsey, Michael. We also pray comfort uh, as, uh, for the family of Nelson as they grieve his loss. But we give you thanks, God, that Jesus is risen and that because we live that 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 he lives that we too may live a new life we also lift up dr davis to you our candidate that has been called principal here at emmanuel and just ask lord that you would grant her wisdom and discerning uh, where lord you have called her to serve grant that uh, lord all of us would bear our crosses in faith ever looking to you and fix our hearts where joys are true truly found lord in your mercy O oh God, you are love, and you always reveal your love through your Son. Grant that all who come to your feast of love may worthily eat of Christ's body and blood, and that whoever abides in his love forever abides in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And into your hands, Lord, we commend all of this for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, who's taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, it was on the night in which he was betrayed that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after the supper, our Lord took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us greet one another with the peace of the Lord.
Please stand. Receive now the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. As a reminder of the reason why we exist as a church, let us speak our vision statement together. Through word and sacrament ministry, we share the love and joy and peace of Jesus Christ among ourselves and with those around us. Our worship has ended. Our service now begins. Let us go in peace. <laughs> 